So here we are, we're looking at the placenta. I'm just going to kind of outline the parts that are specifically considered the placenta. That's this bit right here. And I'm going to orient you by labeling the pink wall that's around this. You remember that's called the uterus wall. That's this wall right here. This is our uterus, and this is a very muscular kind of organ. Remember, this is going to help us squeeze the baby out, or going to help mom squeeze the baby out anyway uh, when it's time for delivery. Now, in the placenta, there are different parts, and there's an inside part. Remember, this is kind of mom is on this side, right? And baby is on, or fetus is on this side. And when I say baby and fetus, I, I kind of mean them interchangeably. Uh, I recognize that they're not exactly the same thing, but when I mean when I mean um, baby, uh, for the purposes of this video, I mean the unborn baby, the baby that's still uh, getting nutrition from mom. So this layer then, this little layer that I just put in here, this is the basal plate, remember? Basal plate. So this is mom's tissue. And on the other side, we have the chorionic plate. Remember, that's the fetus tissue. The chorionic plate is full of lots of blood vessels. And in between the two, this is kind of the interesting part where all the magic is kind of happening. In between the two, remember there's blood. There's a giant pool of blood and it's full of oxygen and nutrients and it takes away waste like carbon dioxide. So this is kind of all the things that the baby needs, right, are located in this pool of blood. And you remember the pool of blood, the, the way we even got this pool of blood was that we have little uh, arteries here, uterine arteries that are kind of pushing blood into that pool, and then it's getting recycled by all these uterine veins. So you've got this circulation, the circulation happening on the mom's side. And within the pool of blood, remember the fetus is actually kind of sticking its little capillaries in there. So the fetus is sticking its capillaries into the pool of blood. So that middle area, this middle zone, is really where the diffusion is happening. Remember, the diffusion is happening from the pool into the fetus's capillaries. All right, capillaries right here. So fetus capillaries are kind of pushing their way into that pool, and that's where they're getting their oxygen nutrients and dumping off the carbon dioxide. So the question is, how does it go from there back to the fetus? So the fetus, of course, has umbilical arteries and veins, and this red one is the umbilical vein, right? And how does the oxygen get from where it's where it is now all the way back to the different organs. And I'm going to draw this little yellow circle. You can imagine this is, let's say, the belly button. The belly button. And it's kind of interesting because so much used to happen in the belly button for the fetus. And by comparison, not much happens in adult uh, humans with the belly button at all, right? So you've got, let's say, one artery there, one artery there. And I'm trying to draw a little face here for us to kind of remember what this looks like. So this is our little face with two eyes, right? So the umbilical vein is in red, and that's, just to label it, that's this guy. And then you've got the two umbilical arteries, and those are in purple. And those are the two eyes of our umbilical cord, umbilical arteries. So what I want to do now is to figure out exactly how does blood, as I said, go from the umbilical vein all the way back to the rest of the body. And to do that, what we need to do is actually kind of sketch out what's going on in the body. So I'm going to kind of draw the diaphragm. Remember, the diaphragm is kind of a muscular, uh, a big muscle, rather. Uh, and it's very muscular, of course, a lot of, a lot of skeletal muscle in here. And above the diaphragm and below the diaphragm are a couple of organs that we're going to have to talk about. And the first one above the, above the diaphragm is a four-chambered organ. I'm sure you're very familiar with this guy called the heart, right? So the heart is sitting up here, and it's got four chambers. And I'm going to quickly label the four chambers. They've got the right atrium and the right ventricle down here, the left atrium and the left ventricle down here. And so this is my heart. And the other organ, and actually let me label this muscle just in case, just in case we lose track later. This is our, our diaphragm, of course. And the other organ, not muscle, the other organ is the liver. This liver is this huge organ. It actually sits right below the diaphragm. So it's actually quite close to the heart as it turns out. And the liver does a number of important things. But right now we're just going to talk about kind of the anatomy of what's going through the liver. So you've got a vein here, 
I'm going to label it here. It's called the portal vein. And don't worry so much about the names of things, but I just want to kind of diagram out how blood is traveling. And you've got another vein here. I'll draw a little bit longer just to kind of give me more space to write. And this is the inferior, inferior vena cava. You remember this vessel. This is the big vein that kind of brings in a lot of blood from different parts of the body. And you have the aorta. Remember the aorta is actually going to go off the left ventricle and it's going to go behind the heart. So I'm going to just draw dashed lines and let's say it comes through here and uh, I'm showing it go down, 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 down and split up. It's going to split up at the legs. So this is where the legs are. And actually these internal, these internal branches, let's say this branch right here and this branch right here, these branches are called the internal iliac branches or internal iliac arteries. You call them internal iliac arteries, iliac arteries. And I'll explain in just a moment why I bothered to kind of name these guys as opposed to all the other arteries and branches I could have named because of course there are many, many branches off the aorta, but these are going to be very important for how the fetus's blood gets around. So let's follow blood now. Let's start back at the umbilical vein and kind of see what happens. So the umbilical vein blood, I'll just kind of show going this way. And this umbilical vein blood is now on the inside of the body of the baby, right? So if this is, if I said this is the belly button, then of course that must mean that everything on this side of the belly button is the body of the baby. So we've got the, the baby there and it's going inside the baby's body and the vein goes, travels, 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 and it has a choice. It can either go over to the portal vein or it can go over to the inferior vena cava. And we'll follow one path at a time. Let's do the inferior vena cava path first. When the oxygenated red blood comes and mixes with the deoxygenated blue blood, it actually forms kind of purplish blood. That's why I'm drawing it this way. Remember, purplish kind of represents um, you know, somewhere in between having a lot of oxygen and then having a very low amount of oxygen, somewhere in between. So that's why I drew that red and blue turning into purple. So if I have purplish blood there, that is one of my two paths, I said. And in fact, this part of the journey, this part is only possible because there's a tube there. And that tube is actually called the ductus venosus, ductus venosus. And essentially what this is, is a shortcut. Now, if that's the shortcut, what's the other path? Makes you wonder, right? Well, the other path is actually much, much longer, obviously. And I'm going to show it over here. So if it joins the portal vein, instead of going down the ductus venosus, if blood goes this way, then it's going to branch out into different parts of the liver. It's going to go to all the different parts of the liver. And then it's going to go into capillary beds, so it's going to go and get very, very, very tiny. So let's follow one branch. Let's say this guy. It's going to get into very, very, very tiny capillary beds. And then on the other side, it's going to get picked up by tiny capillary beds, and it's going to get brought back. And it's going to join up with blood from all the different parts of the liver. And it's going to eventually be part of a vein. And this vein right here is called, this vein is called the hepatic vein, hepatic vein. So either way, even if it you know takes a shortcut or doesn't take the shortcut, eventually blood is going to make its way back into the inferior vena cava and to the right atrium. So overall, the goal is kind of the same. It's going to get to the right atrium. But one way, taking the ductus venosus, is much quicker than the other way. And that's important because you, you want, if you're from the fetus's perspective, you want this wonderful umbilical vein blood, which is rich and full of oxygen, to make its way back to the heart quickly so that it can get pumped out through the aorta to the rest of the body. Now, there is a very interesting way that blood makes its way through the heart itself, and we're going to kind of uh, skip over that for the time being. I'll get into that in another video. But it gets into the aorta, right? That's the next part. And it goes down the aorta. Blood gets pumped to all different parts of the body. And it's, I'm drawing it as purple still because, of course, it's, it's not very, very oxygenated like uh, the umbilical vein is. But it's also not completely deoxygenated uh, like the inferior vena cava. It's somewhere in between. 
and blood goes down into the internal iliac arteries. And from there, from there, you actually have branches that go to one umbilical artery on this side and one umbilical artery on the other side. So you actually have branches that kind of go off of the internal iliac artery and go to the umbilical arteries. And of course, from that point, you know what happens. The umbilical arteries go into the, the uh, pool of blood that mom has set up for, for the fetus and exchange at the capillaries for oxygen and nutrients. And the new blood then is very, very highly oxygenated and the journey repeats itself. So just to make sure we're clear, let me just kind of start from the beginning and go through it again. Then I'm going to use a little blue dot to track, or let's say a little green dot to track where we are. So blood starts in the umbilical vein right here. And let's say that's our first starting point. It goes to a little branch point where it either can go down into the ductus venosus, that would be this one, or it can go this way and join the portal vein, has an option. If it goes the long way, then it goes into the portal vein and it goes off into some capillary, gets picked up and dragged back and joins the hepatic vein, which eventually also kind of merges with the inferior vena cava. Of course, if it takes the shortcut, that route is much quicker. So that's the, that's the whole point of the ductus venosus is to kind of skip over the liver. Eventually, the blood makes its way to the right atrium. And again, it's going to have an interesting path through the heart, which we'll get into in a future video. But for right now, let's just assume it gets through the heart and gets out into the aorta. The blood is going to go down the aorta, is going to branch off into one of the two legs, because these branches go to the two different legs of our fetus. And it'll go down into the internal iliac artery right here and on the other side right here. And at that point, it'll kind of shoot up, some of it anyway, will shoot up into this umbilical artery, into these umbilical arteries, these two. So now blood is over here into our two umbilical arteries, and it's going to go down, and it's going to exchange inside of that pool of blood in the placenta, and it's going to turn around and join our umbilical vein again. So that's the loop that we follow, and that is the fetal circulatory system.